Hello everybody and welcome to another Army on Parade, uh, this time my Skaven. So Skaven uh, won out uh, in the last Army on Parade and so today we're going to walk through my Skaven collection and oh boy is this a fun one. Um, Skaven are the first sort of real army I think I collected. The first army I played was Empire and I still do have some of those old crappy figs. Most of them were like Battlemasters Knights. But the first army that I, th that was a lot of hand-me-downs and stuff like that. The first army that I really went out and intentionally collected as an army was Skaven. And you're going to see remnants of that original force. I've sold off most of my Skaven over time and redid the force somewhat recently because I got tired of the, the old minis and, and my paint jobs on them. So I decided to just redo the whole thing. Um, but some of these guys are the original models from 97, 98, whenever, um, when I first got into them. Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump in. And uh, this is going to be a fun timeline of my history with the hobby because there's kind of Skaven from all over. Here we go. We begin here. This is a box of Storm Fiends. Uh, it is opened. I've cracked and used a few of the bits. But this is my only Skaven, like, who are still sitting in a box. Um, I, I have three Storm Fiends done. You'll see them later. Um, but for whatever reason, I just never really felt like putting the other ones together. Um, these guys are really big and complicated and they take a long time to put together and frankly when I got done with the three of them I was like, well I'm done with that, I'm never doing that again. Uh, but I've got this extra box and I probably will do them at some point in time. Uh, but for now I just kind of keep them around because I, they are certainly great models and I love the ones I have. I'm just not too inclined to pick them back up again. So there you go, my only new inbox. Well, not new in box, because as I said, I did crack and I've used some of the bits. You get, you do get a lot of extra bits with these guys, which is cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, the only thing in a box that I have for Skaven. Alright, this slide. So, this is my unpainted Skaven, or at least most of them. You'll see one or two others randomly scattered throughout. But this is sort of the unpainted guys who have no other home. Um, there's a single sensor bearer, the old model of Deathmaster Snitch. Um, he's missing an arm there, I think. I don't know where his arm went. It's probably somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, the old warp fire thrower, the metal warp fire thrower. Uh, one of the new warlock engineers from the Island of Blood, and you'll see why I didn't bother to paint him as we proceed on. And then two uh, of the old school Gisales who got sort of primed. It looks like they got near primer, kind of, uh, but uh, obviously not really primed. So there you go. It's not too bad for the for with this army to have just a few. I always like to keep a few unpainted models in my armies around, just because then if I get bored or I want a palette cleanser, I can just go paint up one of those figs. Uh, yeah, to me it's just a fun way to do your armies. Always leave just a few figs unpainted, so you got something to go back to if you wanna wanna work on that one. All right, so now we get into that. We start at the lowest of the low, the slaves and or clan rats. Um, there's a lot of these. Settle in. So this is my super long like completely flat movement tray um, that I made. I make a lot, like I made a lot of these movement trays from scratch, which I just used like sheets of tin and cardboard, like uh, heavy cardboard, cut them, glued them. And they're, they're cut to the exact size of whatever that I wanted the, the, um, the unit to be, because I don't like, I don't like edges on base on the, the unit tray. I just, just personal aesthetic. Um, I should have probably painted it black around the edge just so it doesn't even show up. But, uh, I didn't, so there you go. Um, so this is 60 clan rats. Um, one of the, of course, the big problem with collecting Skaven, especially in 8th edition world, was that you just had to paint so many of, of a very not exciting fig. Um, that being said, I took a lot of time with these guys. I'm, I'm pretty proud with how they look. Um, I wanted them to be mostly white. I've got a little champion dude up front. Um, I don't know why they don't really have champ, or, yeah, you know, whatever. They, they have and have not had leaders at various points in time in their history. But I like having one guy that stands out. I also just randomly throw banners and musicians around. I don't really care um, because, again, whatever. Who gives a who gives a hoot? Um, the standard way I ran these guys was pretty just you know, uh, giant buses fifty plus deep in eighth edition. So that's how I made their movement trays. This is actually sixty of them right here. Uh, so yeah, sixty slaves slash clan rats to start us off. So this is like 54 more of these guys. Um, again, same thing. You'll notice I kind of, this was fun because like a, a fun thing to do with units, you see how some of them have like rocks under their feet. Um, that's I think a good way to break up a big unit like this. Not really relevant anymore because you don't have to do that. Um, but if you were doing like, 
King's War stuff or Ninth Age. Um, I think having units, having the people in the unit be at slightly varying heights, you don't need them to be vastly different, um, just creates some interest and breaks up kind of the basing, especially when the, their base here is obviously just some gravel, some grit, some moss, stuff like that. So then having the rocks on some of them is fun. Um, yeah, not much more to say about these guys. Oh, why are they white? I love I love white just because I love the idea of why would they have color on them. Um, they live underground. They live mostly in the dark. I suspect that their their heat vision is monotone. I, they, I think they either see like the Terminator in my mind or they see in black and white like old school D&D dark vision. Um, so they wouldn't really value color very much. Uh, because why Why would you have color for, for most of these guys? So I just picture this as being like the dirty robes they wear um, that are just white because that's what color the cloth is. So there you go. That's my thought on that. Plus I didn't want the whole thing to be a sea of brown. Okay, so this is, so we had what? 60 and then 54, so 114. And this is 29 more. There's actually one more who fits in this to make an even little square block of 30, but he was broken and fell off his base. So that makes 100 and, uh, uh, 144 total of these guys, um, which I think is a respectable number of, of these slaves to have painted through. Um, again, pretty much the same thing. I did like this one smaller block. This is, was often like a bunker or something in 8th edition if, it needed to, if I needed to bunker a wizard or something, like a gracier in here. This is where he would go. This was his little home of friends. And these are two unit fillers. So each of these is six Skaven. These are the 60 by 40 uh, bases, which I don't even remember what came on 60 by 40 bases, but they exist, and uh, which is perfect because clan rats were on little 20 mil squares. So 60 by 40s were six clan rats. It was small enough to just kind of fit into those big bricks in the middle without having it poke out to the end at the edges because I don't like unit fillers that are on the edge of the, the files. Um, I want it to be completely centered. Um, so I made these both like this so they could sit in the back of those buses. Um, there's obviously just a bunch of random scattered stuff uh, from the, like, the one on the left is a barrel from, I don't know, something, maybe the giant kit, I guess. Um, obviously just a rat from any random Skaven thing you buy. Uh, the little rat guy is from, um, I think he's from, like, the Plague Furnace as is the, the thing next to him. And then, you know, just put some tubing around there to make it look like he's heating it up. I thought that was a fun little thing. And uh, then the thing on the left, we've got the, the guy skeleton pointing. Do not remember what kit that's from, but I love that piece. And then we've got the little bone that's actually the foot of the, that's normally what the Hell Pit Abomination is crawling over. Um, and then some skulls, I believe, from the Gorgon. That sounds right. So yeah, there you go. Fun stuff. And again, nice little scattered... I don't like them just being on gray or just gravel. I mean, there's more interesting stuff going on there. Throw some color around there. I like moss and stunted grasses and stuff like that. All right, so weapons teams. If we did the big units, we got to have some weapons teams. Um, so these are three of the new warp fire throwers that came in the Island of Blood, and then one of the old school metal rattling guns. Um, well, I guess I don't think this is the absolute oldest rattling guns. This is like the middle one. Um, well, I've always loved rattling guns. Oh my god. Rats with machine guns. Yes, please. Um, I, I remember way back in, like, I'm going to say 6th or something, I was using those rattling guns all the time. I don't remember them being, I don't know how good they were. Could have been good, could have been bad. Not why I ran them. I just love rats with machine guns. Uh, but these are fun. Um, lots of fun painting warp smoke. I like warp smoke. You can see over these three I was, are probably three different techniques because these were probably painted at much different times. I didn't sit down and do all three of these in a row. I would just do one sort of in between doing other things. Um, trying different metals. Do I like the copper better or the you know the steel better? That kind of thing. Uh, what I didn't do on these, and I hate myself for not doing it, is I didn't drill out the barrels. Always drill out the barrels of your guns. I, I do that now, but I didn't do that then. Um, and it's just one of those things that really, really chuffs me now um, when I look at that and see that the barrel's not drilled out of those warp fire throwers. Because it would just look better if it was. So, there we go. All right, next up, we got to have our chaff, our, uh, our giant rats, the rat packs. Um, so I have here, obviously the ones on the right are just some of the large rats that come in various box sets, like the Doom Wheel and stuff like that. Those, those little rat, or those, uh, those, those box sets are all such a good deal for giant rats, because you just get so many giant rats out of there that are just on every sprue. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so there's there's that one. And they're fun. They got little bandages, and some of them have metal parts. The one in the back has a little, like, eyepiece. Who put the eyepiece on the giant rat? I don't... I don't know. I also love these new Packmasters. Um, one of my more favorite new sculpts they did uh, when they redid all the plastic Skaven. I mean, I love all the, the relaunch sculpts, but I really, really love the Packmaster and his little prod. Um, the two giant rats in the middle are just old school, and they kind of, like, had some paint on them, but... They're not really finished. One of them isn't even on a base, but he's there. He exists. And then the other guys are the old metal giant rats that used to come in the blister packs. And I love the two up front because uh, though they really are giant rats. Like those things are huge. Those are the same size as like wolves in various uh, in various older editions of, of Warhammer. So I thought those guys were cool. Ah, so now we've moved up to the more elite, the Storm Vermin. Uh, I love my Storm Vermin. Um, I love this purple color. Um, I know what I said about Clan Rats, but these guys are the elite group, right? So they need to have some color on them. And purple, always a great color. The color of royalty, of course. And uh, so I thought, why not? These are the elite guard. Um, I absolutely love this model. Uh, the old Storm Vermin, just, I mean, they're okay. They were like super heavy armored, if you know what they look like. Um, but the problem is they just ended up looking all metal. Um, and there really wasn't that much interesting going on with them. Um, these guys with the, the sort of cloth they're wearing over their heavy metal armor just made them much more interesting as figs. Um, I used all the, the halberds and stuff because I love them. I love that look with all the halberds, although I have a few with swords mixed in, champions and such, people who can become champions. Um, again, I just scatter around musical <laughs> instruments. I don't really care. Um, like, that's just as easy a guy if it needs to be. Um, you'll notice the four in the very middle are holding their shield straight up in the air, and if you have, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it takes a decent eye, but you may have noticed there's weird little things carved into the middle of them. That is because those four are the bearers for my war litter, which we will see in just a moment, because the storm vermin bear my lord on, warp lit on, on, uh, on war litter. And that looks like that. So my war litter is, uh, I think that's the bottom piece of a bell, like a screaming bell or something, like one of the levels out of the bell, um, along with part of an Empire Cannon, because why not? I'll throw an Empire Cannon at a, at a base for a model. Um, it doesn't shoot or anything, it just, you know, I feel like they took it and he was, he was proud of conquering that thing. And uh, we just added some Skaven bits and he proudly rides on top of it um, as, his, as he is born into combat by his mighty Storm Vermin. Um, I love that new lord that they did in the Island of Blood. I've used so many of that guy, as you're going to see. And uh, I just think he's a fantastic model. I love the halberd and the sword. Um, I've changed a lot of them. Like, if you look at these, I don't think any two were really armed the same. Um, like, this one's got the choppy chopper. And you're going to see different weapons as we as we cycle through. I try to, at least when I'm doing these conversions, or when I'm putting these guys together, I try to at least convert the weapons they're holding or something so that... Um, so they don't all look like they're armed exactly the same. Um, just because I think it creates a little more interest and sets them apart, even though they have different colors and everything like that. So there's a shot of what they look like with him on top. I think it looks really good. I've always loved this unit. Um, yeah, so nice 40 Storm Vermin with their, their War Litter and the uh, the Warlord on top, ready to ready to take some heads for the Horned Rat. Okay, so now we take another trip back in time uh, to my original metal rat ogres. I've got six of these old school ones. One of these might have been Bone Ripper, I think, probably. The one on the right, because he got like three arms and the thing in the middle. He's got extra horn. Um, I don't know. Uh, I didn't really do basing back then, as you can see. Like, painting it brown was apparently my good idea. That one guy has what looks like real legitimate dirt on his base, I, like Bone Ripper. Can't really tell. Um, the one in the back who's kind of fuzzy, you can't see. There's a dead guy on his base that he's, like, hunched over looking at, which always struck me as funny. And then Mr. Football Player uh, Rat up here in the front with the guy he ripped in half. I was very, very proud of myself for that conversion back when I did that. 17-year-old uh, me, or whatever, was very proud of that, of the amount of red and blood I used then. There was no blood for the blood god then. It was just a bunch of different colors of red, all smeared and stippled, and you can see it's all over his face and his leg and... The whole idea was that the guy had been ripped cleanly in half. Uh, and there is a little bit, you can kind of see it. There is, like, in, so if you look down at his torso, uh, under like the, the, the guy in his hand, if you look like right under his torso, you can kind of see some little gunky bits hanging out. 
Uh, I was rather proud of that at the time, I, and I still don't hate it. I took, like, bits of Kleenex and soaked it through with, like, water and glue, and then stuck it up there with some super glue, and then it just, like, hardened, and then I just painted it all bloody so it kind of looked like ripped out guts and stuff. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd really recommend that conversion today, but, I don't know, it's not a terrible way to do, like, some various intestines, and, I mean, if you rip somebody in half, it's just gonna be a mess. So, I don't, I don't know if really exact modeling is what you need. Um, each of these guys has one of the new pack masters with them, the, the two rat ogres, these and the ones you're about to see. Um, I love the rat ogre on the left, he was always one of my favorite sculpts, left front. Um, and then I've got one unpainted, I don't know why, I've never bothered to paint that guy. But I've never bothered to paint the, the high five bro rat. Um, so maybe, maybe high five bro rat ogre will get painted at some point, but we'll see. All right, so these are the newer rat ogres. Um, obviously most of these, I think all of these actually, are out of the Island of Blood, the two you get there, but I've converted them around um, different arms or uh, you know various different things. So like the guy on the front left, he's got the hand, I think, of the giant. It's funny, you can use like the giant hands on these rat ogres. They're so oddly proportioned, it's actually the right size. Um, because their hands are giant. Like, literally, if you look at their fists, it's the same size as the giant's fist. Even though he's, you know, obviously much more massive than them. Um, the one on the back left has like the troll arm, I think. Because he's got the little fish hook thing. Um, another guy with a giant piece, and he's got the big tree club in the back middle. You know, just whatever. Whatever I could do. I liked cutting these guys up stapling extra bits on them, um, things like that. Uh, on the front left, he's got that little shoulder pad, that like green shoulder pad, which I thought was nice for creating that color triangle with his tube and the guy's shirt he's holding. That's actually from the Gorgon. You know, here's a funny thing. The Gorgon's a great model kit. You get the extra head for the Gorgon or Cygore. You get a lot of that. You get extra arms. But truly the most useful piece out of it is those shoulder pads. The Gorgon has these like arm pads and those are just fantastic shoulder pads. I've used so many of them on other models. <laughs> um, so I, I, think I've, I think I have one left. I mean, you get just like, you get like a dozen or 14 of them. I mean, the guy doesn't have that many arms. Um, and, and I used six arms on my Gorgon and one of those on each arm, but I still, uh, that's, it's, the, it's the little funny bits that are so worth it. And I, I don't I usually see those on bit sites, unfortunately. They'd be a great purchase though. All right, so from rat ogres to bigger rat ogres. Um, these are my storm fiends. Um, you'll notice I did them all with melee weapons, some of which have conversions. Um, so like they have the warp sensors that come off of Thankful. And uh, like, I just kind of have a mix of weapons. I don't really care. I just arm them however I want for that particular fight. I'm not, I'm not very WYSIWYG with these guys. I don't like models that have like 82 different weapon options because I'm not gonna WYSIWYG them. I'm not gonna buy 17 different Storm Fiends, think of the expense of these guys, just to have them in every possible conceivable configuration. So instead, I just kind of do what I think looks cool and just say they're armed with whatever. Um, but this is my mostly melee group. The one guy over on the left does have a little warp gun. But, you know, other than that, they've got their punchers and their little balls. And of course, I got the drill guy because I did love drill guy. Um, I also, uh, there's some, there is some slight conversions here in that. Uh, both in their weapons, and I didn't turn them around, like I didn't think to take a picture from the back, but I, they don't have their brain rats on them. So I don't know if any, if you've seen this kit, it's funny because you don't really see these guys in the back very often, but if you look at this kit, these guys actually have like weird little brain rats, like tiny little rat fetuses that they have in a little pat backpack they carry around, like a little weird scaven papoose, and uh, they're gross, like they're so creepy. And I was just, I didn't put them on there. I just modeled over it, puttied over it, and said, called it a day, and said, nope, that's that's good enough. My guys don't need their little brain rats steering them around. That's, I'm good, thank you. Official pass on that. So, no brain rats for me. Uh, but I like these guys, I like their armor. Um, you can see I was playing around with a couple different ways to do edge highlighting and highlighting on black um, with these guys, so that was kind of a fun experiment. I think the back right is my favorite sculpt. Um, the dude in, like, almost legitimate power armor. Uh, I just think he looks cool as all get out. All right, so now one of my most favorite conversions, my final Rat Ogre involved model. This is my Warlord on Bonebreaker. And uh, as you can see, I took one of the Rat Ogres. Um, again, use one of those Gorgon shoulder pads. They're, they're awesome. 
and uh, he's swinging around a bell, and the warlord is riding the screaming bell. Uh, obviously, here we got a different sword, so he's converted there. And uh, I love this guy. Um, that there's like a heavy gauge rod that's bent into place that's holding that that bell to the rat ogre's hand, and that then that's all drilled right through his hand, and it's pinned through there, and then there's wire running down, and then there's wire wrapped around it to make it look like rope or whatever. Um, I love this conversion. The warlord's actually magnetized to the bone breaker, so that that way I could take him off in case like he died under a certain set of rules. Um, but, uh, and so I can turn around and face him in other directions. But I love the idea of the rat ogre just swinging this around and the rat being, like, agile enough to actually, uh, keep his footing on here. I mean, hey, Skaven Warlords are quite fast. You can see just, just how crazy this is. But I love the movement of the rope and that he looks like he's swinging. This is really, it's a very simple conversion. Uh, you know, the extra bells and stuff and this, this guy swinging around. But it's really one of my most favorite conversions I've ever done. Um, just because I think it's it's hilarious and it makes me smile every time I look at him. Um, and if that red seems particularly vibrant, which it doesn't, but I'm just using that to tell a joke. Uh, so when I was making this model and converting it, I sliced my finger open in one of the worst like hobby-related accidents I've ever had. I mean, I buried my X-Acto knife in my finger. Um, and I was bleeding just like a stuck pig. And I was like, well, I'm not going to put this to waste. So I grabbed my palette and I kind of just let it bleed into the palette for a little bit and then then went and wrapped it up, you know, put pressure on it and blah, blah, blah. And then I mixed in a little bit of red paint with that. So all the red on this is done in my own blood. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Eh, whatever. I'll bleed for Skaven. Oh boy. Okay, so these are my rat swarms. Uh, and as you can tell, uh, they were done a long time ago. Um, one of the two of them don't have real bases. They have sprue that has been cut into roughly 40 millimeter and then some like piece of cardboard or plastic laid over top and then old rats that used to come in the old box sets or whatever um because they've the skaven uh packs have so often had these giant rats in there um to use the swarm with other random bits scattered around of sort of painted or not um like i love how lazy i was about this then um yeah, those are my three rat swarms. And I think that they were probably made the last time they were worth anything, which is many, many, many years ago. Uh, it's almost a shame now. I feel like I should redo these because rat swarms in AOS are really cool. Um, but, you know, hey, here they are. So I guess that's where we're at. In the back, you see the old Packmaster, which I do like. Um, I, it's a shame he was always monopose, but I do very much like the fig. He's one of the old, the old school Skaven that I really like and didn't want to get rid of, so I kept him. Um, the one guy apparently just is in stealth mode. Because I guess I just never felt like totally finishing him. Like I started on the green and then just got bored in the middle or something. I don't. I don't really know. Um, also, at this time, you can tell with my old figs. Like I just thought red blood on every weapon was the appropriate choice. So like all of my old models just have very very poorly done blood effects on every weapon to cover up the fact that I didn't know how to paint metal properly. So there we go. Um, another piece from the old collection. These are the old school plague monks. Uh, I love these old models. Honestly, I like these way better than the new plague monks. Um, so I, I, when I sold off my army, these are the, I kept these guys. Um, this was also the first unit in the army that I finished painting out of my original army. So this is like 26 plague monks or something, which was a big unit back in 5th edition or whatever when I bought these guys. Um, that was like a really sizable unit of plague monks. Um, but I love these guys with their scrolls and the bells and the different knives. The unit's armed really interestingly. It's actually armed like AOS allows them to be armed with, like, the icons and the scrolls of whatever. It's funny to me because, like, these models haven't been around for a while, but they kept all of the options in here. And I think there's still options in the plastic kit, too. I'll admit, I, I don't have any of the plastic plague monks, so I don't, I don't really know. But I love their robes. I love the way they look. They have lots of different, there's lots of different diseases and stuff on them, and you can see various, only little parts of some of their faces. Um, and I did them in this purposely haphazard way, which I, I don't hate, um, even to this day. I mean, the, the painting certainly isn't great, but it's, you know, they're fine. Um, the biggest problem is the yellow. Obviously, I just painted yellow over black primer and didn't know what the heck I was doing there. But um, they're sort of a mix of, like, cream color and green and gray and orange and yellow. And I think it looks nice for weird, dirty monks who are kind of, just being shuffled into combat in a frenzied uh, 
in a, in a, in, in just a, in a frenzy. And you can see here, as I mentioned, just blood on every weapon, right? But it's not even, it doesn't even look like blood. It just looks like I got red paint near their weapons. Um, the thing I am still very proud of on these guys is the writing on the scrolls. So uh, that's all just, you know, little freehand work. And, and here's the thing. I didn't know anything about how to paint when I did this unit. I mean, really. Like, I, I had, somebody had kind of showed me how to paint once, right? There was no YouTube. There was no videos. This is like 98... 99 maybe probably 98 and I didn't know what I was doing but but if you ever if you ever think I can't do freehand because it's too complicated BS L like I just went online or, or opened up my Skaven book that's online yeah that's ridiculous no I, I opened up my Skaven book found the page that talked about Skaven runes and then just used some black paint and copied them I think it looks pretty awesome even to this day I still like how that looks I just grabbed a bunch of different runes, and I think it makes the unit look fun. So you can do freehand. You can do it. I promise. If dumb, you know, 18-year-old me can do it, uh, you can do it too. All right, also from that same time period, we've got my sensor bearer. So I got seven of these guys total. Um, again, which was more than you would... That was, a, that was a lot of sensor bearers. These guys were always very expensive. Um, and you had to have big units of Plague Monks to use them, traditionally. Uh, and they're painted kind of at various times. Um, they're okay. I don't, you know, they're fine. Um, I don't I don't have much to say on their paint job. Except that, again, randomly I did four in the green color, and then two are just other colors with gold sensors as opposed to silver. It's the, the problem of painting figs over lengthy periods of time, right? You just, I kind of don't bother to keep them hanging together. Or I forget I even have the other ones, and just, like, get out a few of them to paint, and then don't remember to go look at the color scheme. Um, I do rather like the yellow-green effect. One of the fun things about Skaven is that you get to play around a lot with the green to yellow color palette, and I always think that's very striking. Um, you can it's, it's sort of the color of Warpstone, and I've just always found it to be a really striking color uh, transition. I think it looks good. Um, I'm not sure how well I executed it here, but it looks good in concept. Uh, but I do like these sensor bearers, these old ones, much better than the new sensor bearers, which honestly I think the new sculpt looks like crap. Um, and it was garbage, and it's probably fine cast now anyway, so I was happy to keep the old metal ones. And then the leader of that little group, Mr. Plague Priest. Uh, this is obviously the guy off of the Plague Furnace slash Screaming Bell. As usual, I made one into a Screaming Bell, so I had an extra Plague Priest. Always the best deal with this. And uh, because he's so big, he's so wide, like his robe stretches out so far, and he's got this big tail, I had to stand him way up. So I built this little ridiculous base out of cork rock, and uh, yeah, he's, so you know, he's elevated. Uh, and I think it works out okay. If you actually put him in the unit, obviously he's magnetized, so he's not going to fall over or anything. And uh, if you, you know, when you put him in the unit, uh, he actually sits above the rest of them. He's very easy to pick out, and uh, I think he looks pretty cool. I, I really love this model. This was the one sort of plague thing out of the new model set that I really, really did love, um, just because he's all weird and hunched and stuff like that. All right, my night runners and or gutter runners, depending on what I need them to be. Um, I love these guys. Uh, these were these were very much a labor of love. Um, these are very carefully chosen clan rats, the ones wearing the hoods uh, a lot of. You see a lot of them have like the full hood or slash like kind of ninja mask on um, because some of the clan rats have those, um, not all of them. So I picked out the ones that I did. I wanted some variants. And then I kind of like slice some of their arms or hands or put weapons in their other hands in a lot of cases or claws on. Um, and built a unit of Night Runners out of the Clan Rat box set. But these are, or, uh, you know, these are just Island of Blood Clan Rats just hacked up or, uh, you know, altered. And then the other thing I did is I built cloaks out of, or I made cloaks out of uh, green stuff. And uh, I this was very fun because I... I hadn't really done this many cloaks or many much in the way of cloaks out of green stuff before, but I'm rather happy with how these came out. They're not perfect, and certainly there's lessons I would learn from doing them, but I think overall they're pretty good. Um, and, you know, I, I like the, like, black to brown effect on these guys, um, the fact that they would be kind of dirty from staying low to the ground and hustling around in the mud. Um, and I think it's a, it looks... I think, I think they came out very well. Um, they are one of my more favorite new units I did because they were so heavily converted. And uh, obviously my favorite is Mr. Jumping Down Rat in sort of the back row there who's up on the rock um, with the dual claws. Uh, I always loved the little claws uh, that the that the Clan Eshin dudes wielded, um, as you'll see as we continue on through Clan Eshin here. 
And uh, yeah, so I love that little dude. He has he has a lot of motion to him with his cape way up in the air. Okay, so these are my actual gutter runners, which are some of the older models. Some are like gutter runners, some are like Black Skaven, um, and came out of the. The, uh, these were a Mordheim warband at some point in time, so that's probably why they they look like they do. Um, but they had the nets and the swords, a lot of them. You can see four that I have that have the nets and short swords, and then two that are like the poisoned blade guys. And then, of course, my lead rat, there he is, with his weird blue, inexplicably blue hand wrist wraps, um, and his giant ridiculous claws. That was maybe the first conversion I ever really did. Um, I This was for Mordheim. I wanted my assassin that led my warband he he went out and bought himself some warp or some uh some claws some of whatever they were called the uh, you know just fighting claws and uh i was like they came in the box they had fighting claws but they were like these teeny tiny little pathetic things i mean they were so small they were like the size of one of these rats fingers i was like what get out of here that's a fighting claw no fighting claws are fighting claws. So as you can see, my love of giant ridiculous weapons goes way back. Because, I mean, this this is whenever Mordheim came out and made this warband. It's probably like 99, 2000, somewhere in there. And uh, so those are like all swords that were cut off from, I think, Empire people and Empire halberds. I think the top two, the squiggly swords, I think are just Empire swordsmen had those swiggle swords. And the bottom two are like probably halberds or something. Um, so, yeah, I love this dude. He has been my little rat friend. I've used him as, uh, I even used him as like a D and D fig one time when I was playing, uh, an Oriental Adventures game and he was, he was a little Nizumi, um, assassin. So yeah, super fun. I love that guy to this day. I regret those blue wrist wraps, but other than that, I like him fine. And then finally, the leader himself, the man, the myth. The Rat Man, the the legend, it's uh it's Deathmaster Snitch. Uh, I love the Deathmaster. He's always been uh, one of my favorite Skaven special characters. Uh, I never really loved Thankwool or anybody like that, but Snitch, that's a guy I can get behind. And uh, take that, High King Thorgrim, you're dead. You're dead now because of this guy. As all stunties will eventually be at the hands of my beloved Skaven. Uh, and so this is the, obviously this is the fine cast Deathmaster, um, the recast of him. I really do like this model. I was willing to put up with it in fine cast just because I think it is an absolutely beautiful sculpt. And I took a lot of time with this to try to make him look just really good. And I, th I think he came out pretty well. Um, I wanted to do him in white because I kind of had like the Assassin's Creed, like the first Assassin's Creed look in my mind. To me, there's nothing more badass than, a, than an assassin who wears pure white. Like, ninjas and stuff who wear pure black, they do it because it's utility. You disappear in the shadows. But the assassin who wears pure white and still does what he does, fear that guy. Because he's real good. So, there you go. The old Death Master. Alright, so moving on into some Clan Skyr. And we start with the uh, Gisales. So I got six Gisales. They're split up here. You saw I had two in the unpainted, so I got eight total. But I got three of the new Gisales that are just like the dudes with the triangle shields. And then I've got three of the old school Gisales painted, which were just the rats standing out there. I guess a more of a human shield or a living shield to stop the bullets when they got shot at them. That's fine. They might have had shields. If they did, I'm sure I lost them long ago. Um, but I, I like the Gisales. I've always loved them. Um, back in the day, the Gisales were like the bane. In 5th edition time period, Gisales were just the utter bane of like knights and stuff like that. I had a common Bretonian opponent, and just night after night in the lances would die to hails of Gisele fire, which uh, makes me laugh. Oh yeah! That's right! That's the Doom Flare! Yes, the mini, uh, the mini Doom Wheel, the Doom Flare. Uh, just such a stupid model. I had to have one. I love this ridiculous thing. I don't know how this is even purported to work. Like, I can't picture how this is even allegedly working. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, like, how does this move? What's it do? How does the guy not flip over the top? How is the other guy hanging on? None of it makes any sense. And I love it. It's just silly. Um, th th I like a lot of copper, and so this has, you know, so you can see, like, nilic oxide. I think one of the keys with nilic oxide is to, to be very reserved with it. And so as you look through the Skaven, where you, when, as we get into war machines and stuff, you notice I, I tend to use it sparingly, like, around cracks and bolts 
and things like that. I think where water would sort of normally collect is how I tend to use nilic oxide, um, because to me that just sort of produces the more realistic effect. Um, but I love this thing. I actually use this quite a bit in 8th edition. It's dumb. No one would ever shoot at it until it ran into things, and I'd use it to go, like, hunt war machine crews and stuff. Uh, it always made me laugh. Because who shoots at this thing first? Oh, boy. Old Doom Wheel. So this is actually not mostly my paint job. This is I, I had had the worst imaginable paint job on this. Um, I can't even really begin to tell you how terrible it is. And then I just somebody was like, hey, I want to paint a model. Can I paint this thing? And I, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. So I just let them repaint this thing, because trust me, they could not have done worse. Um, it's, you know, it's fine. It's the old Doom Wheel that's all metal. It's kind of goofy and silly. Um, if I was ever going to repaint a model, I will tell you this would be it. Um, just because I do have a special place in my heart for this weird, goofy model. Um, so, you know, it's not beyond the, the some in my mind and to someday kind of redo this one. And, uh... And, and breathe some new life into it. Strip all it because it's all metal, so it's easy enough to strip the paint off. And uh, I'd have to let it soak a while, because now there's like two layers of thick paint and probably varnish on here too. Um, but whatever, that's fine. He'd be fun to redo. Uh, goofy model, but certainly very, very fun. And I do love the old warp charge, like lightning shooters on the sides of these. I love the triple sort of blade look on the side. I think that's a lot of fun. Ah, uh, and then my little baby, um, who clearly has not been touched in too long. I don't. I haven't played Skaven in Age of Sigmar at all because I don't really like them in Age of Sigmar. It's too many figs to move around, and so these guys are kind of languished. And I can see like some little, you know, dust webs uh, up on top. I clearly need to dust my Skaven. Um, but one of my one of my other loved, very very greatly beloved conversions from this army, um, with the ramping Doom Wheel going up over the rocks. Spearing the knight right off his dead horse. You can't see it, but the horse has a big like slash mark across his throat where he took the blade, and there's some some blood in there. I, I, I actually now we learned how to do blood finally. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. That whole model is pinned by that one wheel. It holds up. Like I I took this around the country with me when I drove all around the country for the Warhammer World Tour, and uh, it was in the car for eight days. Drove four thousand miles and came out without an issue. No, nothing broke. And there we go. So, yeah, I, I love the, the speared Empire Knight. I love the dude being thrown around and barely hanging on the back. Just ringing the bell. Just ringing the bell. Ah, exactly. Um, I also very much love the banners on these things. And again, just fun, simple, freehand. Um, any, anybody can do it. That's just a micro pen and some red paint. It's not even that good, but um, I think it looks fine. All right, first Warp Lightning Cannon. Um, I'll talk about wood grain here. Um, one of the keys with wood grain and doing a lot of wood is to make, especially in armies like Skaven, do different washes on different wood pieces. So you can see like the center pieces of the triangle with like the frame in the middle look slightly a different color than the outer frame. And the wheels are somewhat different colored, right? Like one wheel is more green, one is sort of a different color, more red. Um, one of the keys to making wood look natural when you've got a lot of wood structure like this is to just, like, what I did here is this is just, like, brown primer out of a spray can. This is Army Painter brown primer all over all the wood pieces. And then it's just just a bunch of washing and dry brushing. Like, as I was painting the rest of the model, I would just dry brush the crap out of it, let it dry, just slather it in various washes. Agrax and Athonian camo shade and sepia and, and Nolm, and just... Slather it, dry brush it. And I just, you know, like as I'm working on the rats and as I'm working on the gun and doing the other thing, just slather it down, let it dry, keep working on other stuff. And that way you get like really high highlights and really low low lights of varying an interesting color. Because the trick with wood is that it's it's an extremely varied um like wood is very not monotone, right? It's got all sorts of different colors in it. Like if you go look at a tree, like really, really go look at the bark of a tree. It's just got grays and greens and tons of browns and reds. It's it's a very, very, very multicolored thing. And so the best way to do that, one of the easy ways to do that, I don't know if it's the best, I shouldn't say that, but one of the easy ways I found is, yeah, just lots of layers, but not the traditional sense of, like, layering paint, of just quick and easy, dirty techniques like dry brushing and, and washing. And honestly, it makes the wood look rougher, which it should. Um, you know, these guys don't, it's, these are dumb rats. They're just hacking down trees and cutting them into shape. So there you go. And then the second Warp Lightning Cannon. The Rat Ogre Parade continues. I love how cheap these Rat Ogres were out of Island of Blood. Island of Blood was the best thing in the world for somebody who wanted to start a Skaven army. 
Um, so this is my other warp lightning cannon um, with the rat ogre on balancing on the bar uh, with the big giant rock backpack and his laser arm gun. Um, again, one of my more favorite and funny conversions. Uh, this one just makes me laugh. I love putting this guy on the table. When I got this out with Ant, I joked that like I get to draw line of sight from the top of his little pointy rock because Ant uh, always, sorry, the Sustainable Center always uh, was very much about how warp lightning cannons aren't supposed to be built in a tall way. It's the plague claw that's supposed to be built in a tall way. That is not correct. If you look in the instruction guide, it specifically says for the tall warp lightning cannon or the flat warp lightning cannon, both are valid. Um, but no, this was this was cool and fun. I just love the idea of like the rat ogre being the the charge. And you can see I added some extra hair. If you look on like the back of his neck, you can see those little pieces standing up. Um, I added some extra little green stuff fur, uh, like standing straight on its end, because I wanted it to look like he was electrified and it had made his hair the the ruffle on his neck kind of stand up. Uh, yeah, just little things like that make me laugh even when I look at him to this day. All right. Uh, and as well, of course, the Plague Claw Catapult. Very simple. A lot of the same stuff. Um, I was I loved this thing. I, I even used it in 8th edition sometimes just because I thought it was really funny to throw the big the big pie plate template around. Um, and I'm glad I had it because let me tell you what, this thing is baller in, uh, in AOS. Um, one of the little things I did with the white is like when I did Clan Skyre White, the wash was red, so that the folds and the undercolors are red. When I did, or, or sorry, or, or um, yeah, when I did like Clan Pestilence based things, like I understand this is actually Skyr, but to me it aligns more with, with Pestilence given you're throwing gross plague on people. So um, their washes were in green, like deep green and green brown, like a Thonian camo shade. So if you look under the, cre the cracks and crevices of the top guy, you'll see that like instead of having the sepia color of brown like all the rest of the dirty rats had, um, he has green. Just little things like that I think brings the color scheme together because there's a lot of other varying tones of green on here between the warp stone and the big snot ball and the tubes and stuff like that. Ah yes, my little love here. Um, so I hate the Hell Pit Abomination fig. I think it is in fact an abomination. It's just too gross. Um, and so, in my mind, uh, Clan Skyer would have looked at um, would have looked at the Hell Pit Abomination and said, "We can do better than that," and they would have built themselves their own version. So, behold, the uh, the Hell Pit Abomination of Clan Skyer. Um, so, this is Worm Gear, the Clockwork Dragon out of Reaper Bones. Um, he's a steal. At I don't I don't remember how much he costs. At twenty but twenty bucks or something is what I got him for, um, and just an absolute steal. Um, his tail is a little bit of a problem still to this day. Um, I tried to bend it. I had to bend it to get it to there, like heat it up in super hot water and then bend it and then freeze it. Um, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, he's got, uh, obviously he's been modified some. His crew is like a warp lightning, uh, or sorry, a, a doom wheel guy uh, driving him with his little, you know, cranky gears. And then the, the um, bellows guy out of, I don't know, like, the, again, like the play claw catapult, or the, um, yeah, maybe he did come off that kit. Maybe he did come off the catapult kit. I don't remember where that dude comes from. Um, but wherever, there you go. Those two, so the way in my head, like, one of them's just bellowing, keeping the engine running, and one of them's steering it around. Um, also strapped on some extra little, you know, bits and bobs, like he's got four of the little lightning shooters, uh, off of the, uh, doom, or, yeah, off the doom wheel. Um, so just fun stuff. Um, this guy was just an absolute experiment in bronze and copper and nilic oxide. I, was, I loved painting this fig. I loved putting him on the table. Uh, and yeah, he's just a super unique hell pit. And I love... Clan Skyer was always my clan. Um, I like all of them. I think they all have a fun character. But I always empathized with Clan Skyer. They were the ones building a better tomorrow. That's what I say. Alright, so the big chariots. So we start off with the, uh, the Plague Furnace. Um, yeah, I don't know. Nothing super interesting here, except that uh, I love the, the warp effect on that of the smoke. Um, I always love this model. I think it's a lot of fun. Again, I don't know exactly how it works. I'm not sure that, like, when you look at how the hook is... When you look at how the hook is on here, I'm not, like, I don't get how they the other guys let go of the chain and make this thing smash. It doesn't make much sense to me. But either way, I don't care. Um, I love this model. I've painted a lot of this model, as you're going to see. 
and um, I just think it's absolutely like the the frame of this thing. I love it, and I think it's very Skaven. I've always loved screaming the Screaming Bell, and I was super happy when the Plague Furnace got introduced because it's basically Screaming Bell two, Electric Boogaloo. So there you go. That one's more or less the most straightforward of them. All right, Screaming Bell, actual Screaming Bell. Um, big Rat Ogre on the back, of course, and uh, you know lots of the uh, the warp gas trailing off of this thing. Uh, again, I love I love doing the warp gas effect. It's super easy. It's basically just um, a fun little mix of white and the green Waywatcher glaze, the Waywatcher green glaze, and then the BL tan green shade, and then like an actual green paint, um, which I think is one of the Vallejo colors I used, like whatever that, whatever the deep green equivalent is. Um, so this was really fun to to build. I love this model. I love the the. I love the dude riding on top of the bell. Uh, again, look, my Skaven like balancing on things. You see now where I took my inspiration for, like, the Warlord stuff. If the Grey Seer can balance on this bell as it swings, certainly the Warlord can balance on his bell. Um, the other thing here is I liked painting the, the front of the bell actually as a rat face, like, in, like, painted colored as though it had been enameled as a rat face. I don't know why. I always just felt like the bell was too boring if it, uh, if it didn't have some kind of color on it. So that was my solution. Ah, my pride and joy, the double bell. How many bells do I have? I have a lot of them. I bought a lot of screaming bells all at... By the way, just to be clear, I bought all these screaming bells in bits, and I was getting these for, like... Like, I bet most of these... I, I, I think I have one legitimate purchase screaming bell. The rest of these I bet I got for, like, $10, just for just collecting bits over time. Um, but, so, hence why I have all these. Um, but this one is was so much fun to put together... The big giant double bell, it's pinned in there, so it's like one bell just literally shoved into the second one. The rat ogre up on top, and then the uh, the other guys down on the bottom. Making that chain actually run the whole distance uh, was super fun, by the way. Um, like, having that chain run throughout the, the, the model was, was really fun to kind of try to work out. Um, but yeah, I've used the extra plague furnace guys down the bottom ringing the other bell because hey, why not? They can they can ring a bell too. Um, and then Mr. Green, Mr. Green Jeans, the 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 uh, gray steer riding way up on top of this one. You, he can definitely scurry away from a challenge on the top of this one. I mean, you gotta you gotta break out your climbing gear to get up to the, to the top of this thing and find this guy. Um, this is one of the bigger models I've done. Uh, this thing's like maybe ten inches tall. It's pretty huge. Um, it's. Yeah, it's pretty big. He's, th this stands about as tall as, like, if not a little taller than Nagash, um, if you're, so just for a basis of comparison. There's another shot of it. You can see from the front, again, just doing the, like, painted enameled face of the, the Skavens on the bells. I don't know why I like it. Just something I think makes it look different. And there you go. Just a little close-up shot of how the, the back is working, and so you can see the Rat Ogre and stuff. I love that rat ogre fig, the, the, the bone breaker on the back of the, uh, or whatever he is, the bell ringer. Um, such a great model. Like, just the way his muscles are just corded because he's pulling on this thing, I think just looks fantastic. That is just absolute stunning sculpture work. All right, so here we've got a bunch of characters. Um, these are all my associated characters. Um, as you can see, we got four warlocks up front. Two are the old school warlocks, which I think do have a lot of character with their little... Um, because they had the reactor on the back, the warp charge collectors, and the lightning claws and such to shoot out. And uh, I thought those guys were really fun with their optics and, and such. Um, then we got two of the new ones that again came in Island of Blood. And I, I like the new guys. Um, one of the one on the left, obviously, is my Doom Rocket Rat. Uh, Doom Rocket Rat is a lot of fun. That's some kind of dumb Empire missile. I don't know. <laughs> but that was, my, that was my brilliant conversion for how to make a Doom Rocket. I don't know. I thought it worked fine. Um, we've got another one of those favorite, my favorite warlords in the back. That's just my stock standard sort of chieftain. I usually use him as just like the chieftain. If I just am using, not a battle standard bearer, if I'm just using like a chieftain, that's who that was. Um, so, and he was fine. Uh, the, then we've got the, another gray seer off the top of a bell, probably off the one off the plague furnace. Um, and I built him a little rock out of, uh, out of cork and painted it like a big piece of warp stone for him to stand on. Again, I like it when characters are kind of up out of units, so the fact that he could be, you know, in a unit, I still wanted him to be easily visible. So, there was that. And then the guy beside him, uh, the, this, to the, directly to the right of the Grey Seer, is the old Special Edition Skaven Standard Bearer that came in, like, the army box, I think. 
uh, is where I got him from. Um, once again, just like the banner, uh, all freehand back when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And again, to this day, I was like, it's fine. The different sort of tones. I mean, obviously it could be done better, but um, I don't I don't hate that. I like the little stitching and the little, you know, uh, Skaven horned rat symbol. I, I've certainly never been uh, a great artist, and I don't think that is a great art, but I think it certainly is functional. And I've always really liked that standard bearer, so I definitely wanted to keep him. Um, and he's still my standard bearer to this day. I always used him as my as my actual army standard bearer uh, whenever I need one. Which is all the time when you're running Skaven, by the way. All the time. Ah, uh, so now to my favorite special character of all time. Uh, Ikit Claw. I love this guy. Mr. Power Armor himself. Uh, this is this is Space Marine Power Armor Mark 0.5 right here. This is when it was still good. Uh, I love this sculpt of Ikit Claw. I had the old one, and he was like one of my... he, The original one I've since sold him, but um, he was probably the model I spent the most time on way back in the day. And I think he was not great, but... I was pretty proud of him, and I remained fairly... I thought he looked fairly nice, even up to this day. So when it came time to do the new one, this is one of the last figs I painted for the army. Because I really wanted to have my, my color down and my technique down, and things like that. And I love this guy. I love the model. I love his attitude. I love his story. He invented the Doom Wheel. I mean, this dude is... He's the bee's knees. Um, so he is he is really my favorite special character, and I've, I, I've always... Ick at Claw and Clan Skyer were, were my thing. Um, so this guy has no conversions or anything like that. He's just, he's actually the metal one. I definitely wanted the metal pig. I think they do make a fine test version, but I wanted the metal one. And uh, he's super heavy, and his arm doesn't always want to stay attached because it's a big, heavy piece of metal that's just stuck on there by the tiniest little connection. Um, but that's okay. I still love him and, and always will. A little shot of him from the back with his, with his power pack. See, you can see it, can't you? You can see the point, the Mark point five power armor. Oh yeah, that's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. All right, so now we get to some of the big new stuff. Uh, Thankful and Bone Ripper. Um, this guy was heavily converted. Um, so Bone Ripper here, it has one of the Vermin Lord's heads. I think he has the War head. Um, he's also got the War Punching Dagger. Um, he's got. Now, I'm not sure. I don't honestly remember what else. The, the rest of the guns might be his. Might not. I don't... It's a mix of the fists and the warp fire projectors. I know that. Because, again, I don't really care. I just model him however I think looks fun. So I gave him two melee weapons and two shooty weapons. So, there you go. Um, but uh, I, I love this new model. I think the new Bone Ripper was a great sculpt. And, honestly, this one went together... Like, Bone Ripper went together fairly easy. He wasn't actually too challenging of a model to put together. Some things like the, the Storm Fiends are just really weird in how they decide to break up the pieces and parts, but I thought this guy was fine and fun and easy to convert, um, so I, I like him. Um, and I love the big horns of like the, the Vermin Lord on Bone Ripper there. There's another shot where we can see Thankful better on top. I love the way Thankful rides this guy. Um, I think this was a very, very fun model, and I love him like breaking through the wall like so he looks like kool-aid man you can kind of see the wall he's like stepping through and the way he's pointing out straight ahead through the wall like my in my head two seconds before this happened he just went oh yeah and just poof, crushed the wall down uh that's that's the narrative in my head at least so there you go this is this is thankful on kool-aid man all right and final fig there you go the vermin lord um, the verb, this guy is obviously, again, converted and put together out of random pieces. He's got the Eshin mask, because I love the Eshin mask. I don't know if those are actually the Eshin horns, or if I use different horns, I don't even remember. I just know I love the Eshin mask on these guys. I think that is just the sweetest looking thing on a monster. Um, and then he's actually wielding in one of his hands the Plague Furnace swingy sensor thing, because why not? And, uh, he's got the little slicey thing off of the Plague vermin lord in his other arm um and then you know he's normally standing on like a rock because this is like the favorite pose right that they they pose these models in is like the one leg up like as though captain morgan bought stock in games workshop and they've really got to work hard to keep him happy so everybody's doing the captain morgan i didn't like his leg on a rock it just didn't make sense to me so i thought if he's got his leg up in the air he's got to be crushing something i know a slave 
So I bet, you know, you can see he's standing on, like, one of the little naked Skaven slaves that has, like, the chains around his feet. Again, that box set's just fantastic with all the variation. Um, and, yeah, I thought, that's how Skaven get ahead. You, by crushing those beneath them. You get to the top by stepping on the weak on your way up. What better metaphor for the Vermin Lord than to have him actually standing on one of the Skaven and just kind of crushing it down in the rock. So, it's a little thing, but it's a thing that always made me very happy. Uh, so there you go. That is the total force, and I think this time I included hey, the total army shot. So there you go. That's kind of the whole force uh, all together there. Uh, this is where their home is. You can usually see this in the background of most of my videos. Um, so that's where they live on their little shelf. They don't come out much anymore because, like I said, I don't, I haven't, I haven't really found a conception of them I like in 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 AOS. I don't like moving around a lot of dudes. Um, they're good, I think. They're quite good, actually. Uh, I could probably build like a rat ogre slash storm fiend force or something that wouldn't make me sad. Um, but I think they'll probably be like my ninth age army or something like that. They've been around forever. I've always played. You know, I'll go back and forth with how often I play them, but they are truly in my heart of hearts. In the center of my cold, dead, icy, blackened heart is a little rat man smiling up at all of you. So, there you go. So, there, that brings me to the end of the Skaven. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I know this one was long. Holy heck was this long. I just looked at the time. I didn't realize how long it was. It's a big army. And what you need to understand is settle in, folks, because the Tomb Kings one is going to be even longer. So, uh, I don't know if that's going to be next or not. I want to know what's going to be next. Put down below what army you want to see me do next. I've got, uh, you know, my Bretonians, my Tomb Kings, my Stormcast, uh, and then the, I can't do the Zinch or the Beastmen or the Corn Girls yet because those aren't finished, and I only want to do my finished armies. So, Tomb Kings, Stormcast, Bretonians. There you go. What's, what's next on the chopping block? Uh, I look forward to your responses. I hope you enjoy this video. As always, thanks for watching so much, and we'll see you next time.